speed is about uh, 54 megabit per second in series N. N series. Uh, N series. Uh, the speed is 450. Maximum speed is 450 megabit per second in NC series. Uh, the maximum speed is uh, over 1 gigabit per second. But we should mention that this capacity, these speeds, we can reach to these speeds only um, in some areas um, without limitations. These speeds are dependent on the conditions uh, that I'm installing wireless LAN in uh, that condition. For example, if I'm installing a wireless LAN inside a building with uh, thick walls, the communication range and the average speed range of my wireless LAN uh, would be less than this. Or if I increase my range, if I became far, going far from the access point, my speed would be decreased. Okay? If I increase the power, output power of the antenna, my speed will, uh, will be increased. Um, if I have some interfere error in my env environment, my speed would be decreased. So it depends on the conditions of the environment that I'm installing wireless LAN in, uh, in there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, when we talk about panels of uh, wireless LAN, Nagman says that in, wire, in infrastructure mode, we can connect to internet, but in, uh, in uh, ad hoc mode, we cannot. No, it's not correct. Because in, in, uh, in ad hoc mode, maybe, for example, uh, one of those systems have a special link to the internet. For example, a wireless link to the internet. For example, I can hotspot my uh, cell phone, and the other devices in my home can connect to my cell phone. Okay, they are connecting to my cell phone, so I'm creating an uh, creating a, an ad hoc network. But in this case using uh, a cellular link my cell phone is connected to the internet but mostly when we talk about ad hoc network we don't talk about a connection to internet mostly okay in wireless LAN, in Frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz. In the standard of wireless LAN, the Ameri American standard of wireless LAN, we have 11 different channels. Those channels have some overlaps. Each channel has uh, over uh, each channel. Each channel has some overlaps with the previous channel and with the next channel okay so we have 11 different channels with some overlaps in frequency of 2.4 in frequency of 5 gigahertz we have four different channels okay but my system my host can only connect to one of those channels. If I should select, for example, I'm connecting to my 
axis point. Okay, my axis point has a specific channel. Uh, so my laptop should works with that channel to connect to my axis point. Okay. Uh, is it possible to use uh, the same frequency channel uh, in two different networks? Yes. Even if they are uh, overlapped, they are installed in a in the same location. Both of those networks may have uh, similar channels, similar bandwidths. And at that time, they, uh, they will interfere with each other. So uh, you can say, OK, you have two uh, wireless networks, and your uh, distance to the access point is very short, but you cannot send or receive data. Why? Because your access point interfere with each other. Each of those access points likes as a noise as a noise for the other access point. For it for its neighbor. So I should decide about the uh, channel number of my access point. How I can do this? Um, you can use some uh, Wi-Fi scanner applications in your cell phone. Yes, to reduce interference. Okay. You can use some uh, Wi-Fi analyzer tools in your cell phone uh, to check your, your environment and see uh, which channels uh, are used uh in your environment i'll find an um, i'll find an um, empty channel but remember that for example if i choose channel one this channel has some overlaps with channel two if i choose channel six channel six has some overlaps with channel five and channel seven Channel 8 has overlap with channel 7 and channel 9. Each of those channels has some overlaps area. So find an MPG channel with at least at least two channels difference, two channels distance. For example, if you can see that okay, uh, channel 1 and channel 3 and channel 6 are used uh, and 7 are used in your around in your location okay choose for example channel 10 or 11 something like that never choose for example channel number five or channel number two because they have some overlaps with channel one channel three channel six okay just uh, Leave some channels and select the farthest channel as much as possible. You can define this channel in your access point. Go to this configuration panel of your access point, okay, and then select, uh, okay, for example, my access point uh, can go up on channel, for example, number nine, number 10. Okay, you can. Uh, Configure your access point for this, and you can uh, monitor your network, your location using Wi-Fi Wi-Fi analyzer tools. There are several tools for this. In, uh, for example, Google Play or uh, App Store of uh, Apple. Okay, but. Let's suppose that uh, I'm installing a wireless LAN, and uh, now a new house is arrived to my cell, to my BSS. And now I want to 
uh, it want to join to my network what can i do to connect to my access point in this slide i say that each cell we count uh, bss to each of these cells okay and if my network has more than one B bss more than one bss for example in this case here in this example we have two different bss okay we call them ess or extended service set extended service set Okay. So now I have an I have a I have an arriving host which is uh, want to uh, join to my access point. It want to associate it with my access point. Okay. The arriving node firstly should scan the channels. I said that in two point four gigahertz we have eleven channels. And in 5 gigahertz, we have four different channels, totally 15 channels. Okay. Uh, please note this, that we are talking the standard, uh, standard 802.11, uh, not, not a general standard. The basic standard of Wi-Fi is IEEE 802.11. But this standard has some modifications in Europe and some modification in Japan. For example, um, I think in Japan you have three or six different channels, different channels. Instead of having 11 channels, I think they have uh, three different channels. But, um, and in Europe, you have uh, a different number of channels. But here we are just we are talking about the IEEE 802.11 standard, the basic standard of Wi Fi. Okay. My system arrives to the network. Firstly, it should scan the whole channels, 15 channels, and listen for the beacon frames. What is a beacon frame? Beacon frame are some frames that are propagated from AP of the cell. In this frame, we have, for example, AP's name or SSID and MAC address of AP. And maybe it has uh, some other information for example it has some uh, authentication information okay and also for example when, uh, how can i use dhcp in wireless lan for this again i should beacon frames yes i should beacon frames so my system listen is uh, listening is listening to the beacon frames it catches the information of access point uh, then it performs the authentication if it's necessary and after that it should receive an ip address so it would uh, look for dhcp for dhcp server of the network if it run DHCP service to find, uh, to receive an uh, IP address in that network, in the new uh, network. Okay, but the first step was listening to the beacon frame, beacon frames. We have two different, different types of scanning in wireless LANs. Passive scanning and active scanning. In active scanning, my access point works regularly. 
common in a common manner. What does it mean? It means that my access point will propagate the beacon frames regularly, regular, uh, uh, regularly. Okay. So the new newly arrived house just must uh, sit and listen to the beacon frames and find the best access point uh, around itself and then uh, try to so make an association with that access point for example here house h1 receives the beacon frames from ss1 and ss2 so we just select the best receive signal and then try to join uh, to that network okay try to make an association with that network but in passive we have another types passive scanning what is passive scanning in passive scanning look at this one here in active scanning my system start to send information send some messages to the access point i'm here who is here i want to connect to this network who is here in active scanning i'm looking on an arriving system to the network and i'm looking for the basis stations for the access points okay but in passive scanning i never look for my house never look for the basis stations why because i can in the configuration i can hide my access my basis station if i hide my basis station in uh, the configuration of my access point nobody can see me so my system should sit in the network and listen to the beacon frames to find a hidden access point to find a hidden access point and then, then according to the beacon frames my system can detect okay there are for example two access points around myself and then It would choose one of those access points and try to associate it with them, sending an association association request uh, to the best access point, and that access point, um, for example, would be uh, would be response uh, to the request. So we have two different types of scanning: active scanning and passive scanning. mention in this session we are using csma c8 technology uh, csma technology to join to uh, the network and sending information inside a network in layer two okay but what is csma CSMA means carrier sense multiple access. What does it mean? It means it means that let's suppose that I'm an I'm a wireless host in my network. Okay, in a network. If I want to send information, firstly I should listen to the carrier to the medium. Carrier sense I should listen to the medium is it free yes or no carrier sense i'm listening to the carrier to the medium to find that if it if it's free is it free yes or no if it's free i can send information over the medium and the other host can do this and repeat this uh, strategy so 
we have carry and sense multiple access other house can repeat this my strategy so to so they can access to my medium carrier sense multiple access but here we are talking about wireless medium it's different from a wired medium a wired medium as we mentioned in chapter one in wired medium we are using a guided medium so my signals are transferred over a table a guided media but in wireless we can't why because in wireless technology mostly in wireless technology we use a single antenna this antenna can be used can be used as a sender or a receiver we cannot use this antenna as a server and a receiver at the same time in a single time it should be a sender or a receiver if i want to send while i'm receiving i have to use two different antennas In wireless can we have only one antenna, one antenna. So when I'm sending information, if someone else sends to, I cannot hear his voice, its voice, the voice of other systems in the network. So I cannot detect the collisions in wireless networks. Because I'm sending, I cannot hear when I'm sending, so I cannot detect collisions in this case. But the collision may happen in a wireless network with high probability. And it says that is this some kind of wireless network? Yes, we are talking about Wi-Fi technology. It's a, it's a wireless LAN technology. Okay, so I cannot detect the collisions. So we say that carrier sense, multiple access, collision avoidance, CA. It means what does it mean? It means that I cannot detect in internet technology. We have CSMA CD. CD means collision detection. But in wireless LAN, I cannot detect a collision because I have a single antenna. I can send or receive. I can send or receive. So, the only task that I can do is that I can avoid a collision as much as possible. So, we use collision avoidance strategy here. We talk about collisions uh, as an example. In the last session, we talked about even no problem. If we don't know problem, the system B, the information received to system B or send it from uh, system B would be collect, collided. Because A and C are sending their information simultaneously toward B. And B would receive the summation of those signals. So collision is a fact. I cannot remove it. 
so I can, I should, I must try to handle it, to remove it, to avoid it. How? In CSM technology here, first we say that, firstly, the sender sends the carrier. It finds that, okay, the carrier is empty. Then we say that, okay, wait, wait for a DIFS time. Or, um, I think delay interfering in space. Wait for the IFS time and then send information. If the channel is not, is empty. I'm listening to the channel. If the channel is still empty after a DIFS interval, then I'm saying, okay, the channel is empty, so I'm sending information, my information. And after that, after sending information, we receive the uh, SIFS. We, we have to, in the sender, in the receiver, we have to spend a SIFS interval. And after that, sending an acknowledge. Okay, I receive your sent information. This acknowledge means this. I receive your package or your luggage. So, to avoid collisions, we say that, okay, before sending, wait for the IFS time. Before sending, acknowledge, wait for SIFS time. Okay. Maybe someone said, okay, um, I'm waiting for a delay and after that I'm starting to work. Is it true? Is it okay? You must say no. Why? Maybe, suppose that maybe. I want to send information, so I'm listening to the carrier for the DIF, DIFS time, interval time, okay? After that, at the same time, excuse me, at the same time, maybe someone else repeat my work. Completely separated, okay? Completely separated. What will happen in the result? Again, we have collision. Again, we have collision. Why? Because those systems never know about their simultaneous activities. So they will send information, especially when, this is important, especially when uh, we want to send a large amount of data. How can I handle this? To handle this, we use an extra CTS RTS mechanism. We use CSMA to allow, no, in CSMA name, we cannot use, we cannot avoid um, the collisions. In CSMA CA, we have to, we uh, can avoid. Look for CA part. So, my problem is this. I'm defining a new problem. 
I want to send some information over the network. A last file over the network. And at the same time, someone else sends information to our team. How can I find this? Uh, look at this. We are using C CTS RTS uh, strategy. For example, here A and B cannot hear each other, but they can hear access point, or they can send or receive information from access point, or sending information to the access point. So we say that okay, if you have a large file, if you want to send a large file or a large message, firstly, send an RTS to the access point or to the destination, okay? First and firstly, send an RTS message to the destination. Here you can see that A and B sending simultaneously, so their received signal in the access point is collided. After sending RTS, my system listen to the network to receive the CTS message. What does CTS message means? It means that, okay, your request is allowed. It. You can send your information and uh, your net, you have access to the network, for example, for uh, six milliseconds. Something like that, okay? In the first run, the RTS of A and B are collided. A and B should stay for a random time, and then try again. Here, the system A is started sooner than B. So it sends it, its information to the access point and the access point confirm the request. Request to send, clear to send. CTS, clear to send. After receiving this, I can send the data. With a, guarantee, with a guarantee. Why? Because in the CTS or carry a clear to send, the access point would, uh, would announce to the whole systems in my network that system A wants to transfer, for example, five megabit information to me. Please be silenced. The rest of systems, please be silenced. I'm working with system A during this time. So system B, after uh, we receive this CTS frame, uh, and it have to postpone its information. And now the system A would send information to the access point with some guarantees. When does the wireless works? It will, you are talking in layer one and layer two. Nine. CSA is a technology layer two, and wireless is a communication technology in layer one. Okay. After sending total information, then look at this. Then I can receive an acknowledge. Say that okay. The sender, the receiver, or the access point sends this acknowledgement. It means that okay, everything is okay. Then system A sends its information to me. Okay. Uh, 
let me please wait for a second let me once uh, one minute please wait for one minute please i will be back very soon please wait uh, so using this cts rts mechanism i can guarantee that i'm avoiding collisions between those uh, members of bss in bss okay but remember that using this strategy using this mechanism rts cts uh, mechanism i'm avoiding avoiding the collision between the systems inside a cell but i cannot never never i cannot avoid noises in wireless environments never nobody can say that okay i'm granted that there is no noise in this environment no nobody can guarantee this we cannot avoid noises in wireless networks so wirelessness networks sending information in wireless network is very complex it's too complex especially in cell phone or in a wide area wireless networks especially in cell phones cellular telephones and when we talked about different generations of wireless uh, cell phones those generation the main differences between those generation is about the sending and um, information uh, mechanism in their physical layer the basic and main differences between different generations of cell phones cell phone technologies is on their physical and mac layers not in the rest of layers okay yeah this is the frame mac frame of uh, wi-fi it's similar to the mac frame of uh, internet in the same way but there are some differences some differences in this uh, frame uh, you have two bytes for frame control two bytes for the duration and here you can find uh, four different four different fields of address addresses okay four different fields of addresses and a payload and crc and a, a sequence control field okay the main difference between this structure, structure of frame of wireless LAN with the frame of Ethernet is that in this structure here, we have four fields of address, MAC addresses. In Ethernet, we have only two fields of MAC addresses, but here we are, we have four fields. So maybe someone says that, okay, what is the difference between them? Same as Ethernet, we have the sender and the receiver MAC addresses here. It's completely same as Ethernet. In the Ethernet, we have a similar strategy. Sender MAC address and receiver MAC address. The first address is for the receiver MAC address, and the next one is the MAC address of the sender, okay? But the third MAC address is the MAC address of the access point. If I want to send information to someone else in the network, firstly, I should send my information to the access point and then the access point will relay 
my information, my frame toward the destination. So I have mentioned the access point, the MAC, MAC address of the access point. The third field is the MAC address of the access point. And I'm connecting to it. The, four ad, the fourth address, address number four, is used only in ad hoc mode. It means that if I use an infrastructure mode, I never use this field in infrastructure mode. But in ad hoc mode, yes, I can use this field. Why? Because this field, because in ad hoc network, the topology of the network would be changed very fast. Always the topology of network changes. So we need more fields, field of addresses. Okay. Look at this one here. The system H1 wants to send information toward the internet. So the next hop of this path sending information from H1, the next hop is R1. I have to send information to the access point and then that access point would relay the frame toward R1. But here, look at this one. I'm sending information to our access point. So I should mention the MAC address of access point, MAC address of H1, and MAC address of R1. I have three MAC addresses. After receiving an access point, the rest of pass is over Ethernet, over a wired network. So instead of using a frame of Wi-Fi, I should use a frame of Ethernet, IEEE 802.3, Ethernet frame. So I'm changing the structure of the frame. And now, I'm using the R1 MAC address. What is H2? H2 is here. The MAC address of this access point toward connecting uh, toward R1. So I need this third MAC address here. For the MAC frame of Ethernet here in the next step. Um, okay, so we use this structure for addressing in uh, a frame of Wi-Fi, but uh, here we have the two bytes or um, 16 bits as a frame control in the MAC frame of Wi-Fi. We have a two bytes frame control. Uh, let me look on these fields very shortly okay protocol variant type subtype uh, for example type is related to rts cts acknowledge or data we type uh, we talked about these types is this frame sended by an iap or it's sent toward the ap to ap or from ap or uh, should we use a power management strategy? If yes, you should use this flag, power management. Should we use web encryption, web encryption technology? 
If yes, we use we should use this bit. Okay. So in the control frame, we can define some more some uh, interesting um, information here. For example, in power management, if I use power management in my network, it means that I'm running a power saving mode. If I put one in this field, power management, it means that I'm running a power management protocol in my network. What does it mean? It means that my system, if if my system has nothing for send or receive, for sending or receiving, it has not. Okay, there is no information for sending or receiving. So it will set this field power management. It means that access point. I want to sleep. I want to go to sleep. Okay. I want to sleep. I'm sleeping, and after a while, I will wake up. If I have some frames, please store them in a place. After after wake up, send them to me. So I'm sleeping, and after a while, I wake up. Okay, I wake up. Is there any new frames for me? If yes, send me. If no, I'm sleeping again for a longer time, longer than previous time. That's this point. We we'll check. Okay, for example, okay, there is no information. Sleep again. My system sleep again for a longer time, longer than my sleeping time in the first. Period. After again, after a while, okay, I wake up. Is there any information? No. Okay, I'm sleeping again. Again for a longer time, longer than the second period. I will repeat this strategy. Using this strategy, my system will save its power. Because it during the sleeping mode, it uh, it it will uh, shut down its uh, network card. It never it doesn't send or receive information. So I'm saving the power for sending or receiving those information. Okay, that is very interesting. It's an it's an interesting option uh, for mobile devices to save information, to save uh, battery. Okay. Maybe someone says that okay. Uh, for example, my my network has two BSS. Okay, BSS one, BSS number one, and BSS number two. Okay, I'm saying okay. For example, in the uh, in our school in the university. We have different uh, BSS, different access point, so we have different BSS, BSS, okay? Um, I have a question. When I'm moving from one of these BSSs, from one access point, from, for example, BSS1 to BSS2, what will happen? Uh, does my IP changes change? Yes or no? I should say no. Why? Because we are talking about layer 2. We are creating, developing, implementing those BSS in layer 1 and layer 2. And IP is in layer 3. So if I move between those Access point. In, well, if I move uh, inside uh, the school in the university, inside uh, our school in the university, the only things that I change is MAC address of the access point. 
on leaving one access point and joining to the another access point. And everything is happen, uh, happens in the layer two. So simply, in switch switches, we have a self-learning technology. It means that the switch can learn, okay, um, I can receive information from, for example, system A from this port. And now I'm changing my access point. Okay, I'm receiving information from system A from that port. The switch has a self-learning mechanism. It learns by position. So it's simple. I don't need to change my IP address. The whole of those BSS, all of them are in a single IP subnet. All of them are in the single or in the same IP subnet. I don't want, I don't need to change my IP address when I'm moving in the school changing my access point from my access point A to access point B if something happened in layer 2 the Wi-Fi technology has some other capabilities for example uh, some of them are advanced capabilities uh, I talked about uh, power management, okay, and uh, we have other technology for rate adaptation. We, in the past, we said that in wireless technologies, according to the SNR value, SNR and bit error rate values, I can I can change my Mod, uh, modulation modulation techniques to overcome the increases in beat error rate value to keep my the SNR in a good level so simply when I see that okay the beat error rate is increased in my network simply the wireless LAN the houses in wireless LAN changes their modulation to a stronger one for example changing from cam 256 to cam uh, 16 and changing from cam 16 to bps for example why if you remember at the first of this session i said that the location of your wireless line is important maybe the walls are too thick or maybe I'm going far from the range of my wireless LAN. In both of these cases, the received signal to my system is very weak. It means that its SNR value is very low. And if you remember, I said that SNR has a reverse relation with bit error rate. So a lower SNR means a higher bit error rate. So I have to change my modulation technique to a stronger one to overcome this, uh, this problem. Because a higher bit error rate means that I cannot receive information correctly. Most of received information uh, would be lost because they are corrupted so i have to drop them those frame those corrupted frame would be dropped i never receive information so in wireless land we have a rate adaptation techniques to overcome this problem as much as possible okay uh let me Talk very sh uh, in short period. Did you talk about personal area networks or wireless personal area network uh, and Bluetooth? When we talk about a wireless personal area network, uh, I'm talking about uh, 
less than 10 meter radius. Okay, mm -hmm. less than 10 meter radius. For example, something between three, four, five meters, something like that. For example, uh, I want to connect my wireless mouse to my laptop. My wireless keyboard, keyboard to my laptop. So the distance is not too much. Maybe half of half of a meter, one meter, two meter, or something like that. Attaching a, a, a wireless IP camera to my laptop. Okay, this is a wireless personal personal area network or wireless pan. It's a pan personal area network. And now we are talking about wireless pan, W pan. Okay, if you have a Bluetooth, is the um, dominant technology in wireless band, we have other technologies uh, such as Zigbee. Okay, Zigbee is a compat uh, is a Competitor technology with Bluetooth and I think really 802.15 is another competitor. I think really 802.15.4 is similar to Bluetooth. 15.4. This is similar to Bluetooth, but 802.11 is something near to Bluetooth. Bluetooth is an industrial te uh, technology, okay? It's not a scientific technology. In wireless LAN, we have, uh, wireless LAN is a scientific technology. It's developed by IEEE uh, Institute, but uh, ZigBee and Bluetooth are not. They are, uh, they made by consortiums by uh, the industry, okay? Bluetooth is an ad hoc network has not uh, infrastructure uh, it works on frequency 2.4 to uh, radio range its maximum speed uh, its maximum transmission speed is up to 3 megabit per second and uh, its control strategy is uh, slave and master or master client okay here the first system in the uh, we call this as a peak on it. We call this cloud here, this circle or cloud. We call it as a peak on it. Peak on it. Okay. In the heart of this peak on it, we have a master controller. One of those, uh, the first uh, system who uh, on is uh, Bluetooth. Okay. He is the master, the first uh, system with the, with the on state uh, status Bluetooth, okay? And the other um, systems, they want to connect to my, uh, to connect and send information. They are client uh, systems. If, they, if two client devices define, wants to send information together, they should ask from master okay master i want to send information to client for example number two and the master will grant those transmission and uh, in a pick on it we can have on up to seven different systems seven different clients in a pick on it uh, and you can see there are some typed nodes inside the pick on it there are parts of peak on it, but they are part. They have no idea for sending or in, uh, receiving information. Uh, or they slipped systems. Okay? So the part mode uh, systems are those systems that uh, they are sleeping. And they would, they would be wake up next time, for example. But... Uh, The rest of clients here in this network can send or receive information under the supervision of the uh, controller. Um, 
Apple Twist, we are using TDA technology with uh, 625 microsecond time slots. Uh, and uh, if we use FDM technology, uh, in FDM technology, uh, the sender can use 79 frequency channels, so 79 well known or known frequency channels. And uh, the sender uh, and the receiver, both of them, would uh, hop from one channel to another channel during each time slot. I mentioned that the time slot is 625 microsecond. In each time slot, the sender and receiver are working in one of those 79 channels. And after finishing by that time slot, the next time slot, they will, they will, uh, they will hop. They will go to another, jump to another channel. Next time slot, jumping to another one. Next time slot, jumping to another one. And this jump is random. It's completely random. It means that I cannot, I don't know, for example, if uh, the sender and receiver are in, uh, for example, channel 50, what is the next channel? I don't know. Uh, because it's completely random. Uh, and uh, we call it as a frequency hopping technology. Frequency hopping uh, spread spectrum, FHSS. So this is the frequency hopping. Maybe someone's, uh, maybe you. Um, here something about uh, electronic war between the jet fighters or helicopters or something like that. Okay? Uh, when, it, when an electronic war happen, you can see that, okay, the whole con uh, connections, communication links are down, will be down. Um, why? Because the intruder will send some noise to those uh, frequency channels uh, that we use them for communication. Or we, uh, we call it as jam, uh, jam signaling. We make interference over those communication links. Okay? Uh, what is the... How can I resolve this problem? How can I uh, defeat the intruder? Maybe the only answer is using frequency hopping technology. I should define two main numbers of uh, sending and uh, receiving uh, channels, okay? Sending different sending channels, and then I can randomly move uh, and jump between those channels. So uh, if, an if an intruder tries to uh, jam my signal, he or she had to jam all of those channels, all of them, not one of them. So it needs to uh, use too many powers for this. Okay? So we can act against electronic, uh, electronic wars using frequency hopping technology. Okay. Uh, that's enough for today. Any question? Okay. Uh, okay, I wish the best for you uh, in the rest of the week. But again, tonight I will ask you, I will upload a new, assign, a new assignment for uh, in two homeworks uh, from Chapter 1. Uh, and I will announce the new timetable of this course because the timetable of course has been changed uh, from the next week uh, we will apply the new timetable i will announce it tonight and uh, also i will announce you uh, the time of uh, exam or quiz of chapter four okay 
I wish the best for you and uh, have a good time. Goodbye. Bye.